Welcome to Collateral. Today we'll pose a rhetorical question. Historically speaking, what's the surest way for a foreign country to get on the bad side of the U.S. government? The answer is by nationalizing its country's oil industry. Any foreign leader bold enough to make such a move takes his life into his own hands. And we'll give you just one example of many we might. On May 1st in 1951, Iranian Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh moved to nationalize his country's oil industry. He moved to assume command of the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company. The move had broad support of his own people, was supported by the Iranian parliament, but it wasn't supported by the British, of course, who stood to lose billions of dollars for this entirely reasonable move by the Iranians to try and assume full control over their most precious resource. So what happened next? Well, in 1953, with a newly minted Republican administration in power in the U.S., the CIA engineered a coup to dethrone Mossadegh and to install the Shah of Iran. Now, people behind this in the CIA were Kermit Roosevelt and John Foster Dulles, among others. The coup was a success, and just one year after gaining power, the Shah had returned 80% of the country's oil interests to the British and the U.S. Now Iran could fairly be called a U.S. resource colony. So while the Shah's rule was perfectly suited to elite U.S. interests, it was an absolute disaster for the Iranian people. Before he was overthrown in 1979, the Shah was responsible for the death of thousands of political opponents in 1976, Amnesty International wrote that Iran had, quote, the highest rate of death penalties in the world, no valid system of civilian courts, and a history of torture which is beyond belief. No country in the world has a worse record in human rights than Iran, unquote. Now fast forward to the present day. Last week, again on May Day, President Hugo Chavez of Venezuela moved to nationalize his country's oil industry. The move came exactly one year after another South American leader, Evo Morales, took back Bolivia's natural gas fields from foreign investors. Now, you don't suppose the U.S. would try and overthrow Chavez like it did Mossadegh, do you? Well, did you know they already did try? In April 2002, a group of plotters led by businessman Pedro Carmona briefly gained power in Venezuela. The U.S. Quick, quickly issued a statement in favor of the coup attempt, but the coup attempt failed. An emboldened Chavez quickly regained power. Now, shortly thereafter, in Britain, in the U.K. Guardian, it was reported that Carmona and his henchmen had been received at the White House months before. They met with high-ranking members of the Bush administration. These are men who have been recycled from the Reagan era dirty wars. People like convicted felon Elliot Abrams, for instance, and current UN ambassador John Negroponte, the same man whose connection to Nicaraguan death squads in the 80s soiled his name forever. We're also talking about people like Otto Reich, another Reagan era uh, recycling project, who was President Bush's main policy man and a man who reported to Oliver North during the Iran-Contra scandal. So that's your tax dollars at work, folks. Bush administration reactionaries plotting to overthrow a democratically elected leader who wants to bring true national sovereignty back to his people by limiting the control of corporate power. We know another country that needs a return to national sovereignty, and soon. If you find what we're doing here useful, please tell someone about it. When I was in my mother's womb, social structures seemed a simple thing. After birth, I cursed my luck. Then when